Hello, good afternoon, welcome, whenever you find this. Uh, so, happy spring. It just turned spring this Sunday. I wonder if you can hear that train. Okay, so um, today we're gonna be reading Feel Alive by Ralph Smart of Infinite Waters. And uh, it seems like the perfect book to read now that we're in this brand new season. There's a lot of changing energies that we're working with, lots of new things. Uh, and man, in my part of the world, things are starting you know, to get greener and grow. Hey, cool gamer, welcome. Hey, Genevieve, awesome. So yeah, let's give it a whirl. And you know what, too? I just feel so blessed about all of this. I happen to get permission from Ralph Smart himself. Oh my gosh. Ah! <laughs> it's so cool. So it's been a while since I read this book. And um, I think today I could really, I could really take it in. So we're going to, we're going to try and get through all of it, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how my words, how my mouth is working. All right. Acknowledgements. This book is dedicated to all the wonderful free spirits around the world, those who dance in beauty and joy at the new world. A special thanks to my wonderful mother, beautiful sister, and my beloved partner. Every moment writing this book has been enjoyed. Life reveals itself more and more as I dive deep within the depths of my soul. Sharing with the world frees my heart, and I will not stop doing so. Connecting with beautiful kindred spirits on the Infinite Waters YouTube channel is awesome. You are all appreciated and loved. Feel Alive is looking at aspects of life which affect us all. Relationships, universal mind control, judgment, depression, fun, fear, and love. The, books finds, the book finds solutions to live in harmony <clears throat> with the universe and to remember our true worth. The time has come on the planet to live free and in abundance. Many of us live, but how many feel alive? To feel alive, we must dive into the moment. And remember, we live in a flash of light. We are infinite beings who transcend time and space. As nature inspires me, I hope this book inspires you to become the best version of yourself. The power lies within you. A big thanks to the universal energy permeating all existence. We are made from the same fabric. Now is always. Infinite love and balance to everyone. Forever free. Ooh. Hey, Fiona, I love you. Welcome. Dudes, I just got my hair cut. Oh, it's so short. <laughs> okay. All right. Chapter one. How to clear your mind. We live in the world we think of. Breathe easy, just be. How do we live from our hearts? How do we free ourselves? On my journey, I have realized the human mind is similar to a computer. In a computer, you put programs. The more programs you put on a computer, the more it slows down until it eventually crashes. The more we accumulate in the mind, the more we slow down until we too eventually crash. Belief is the program that creates our reality. It's all BS, belief system. <laughs> Whatever we are thinking, we are creating. In essence, we live in the world we are thinking of. Many of us want our minds instantly to switch off. That's impossible. The more effort you use to get into the effortless state, the harder it becomes. By surrendering, our heart space opens, letting go off society's expectations of what friends and family think liberates you. Accepting yourself 100% is the first step of clearing your mind and watching it dissolve. When we look at the world we live in, we do not know how it operates. The hidden mysteries of the world are a reflection of what's happening within ourselves. Everything we accept as real has been put there as a program. This is what fills the mind. There are hundreds of thousands of these little programs filling the mind, just like a computer. To clear the mind, we have to begin deleting each one, one by one. Can we look at people without judgment? Many of us look at people and see their race, color, and nationality. All of this creates a tremendous amount of blockage, blockage within the mind. <clears throat> 
As children, we are living free. We are living in the present moment. Hence, we are super powerful. Keeping alive the inner child is you. Oh, keeping, a, keeping alive the inner child in you is essential to clear your mind. Many of our parents took us out of the present moment. The first time they asked you, what do you want to be when you grow up? The spell was cast. Now we are thinking in the future. I want to be a lawyer. We are projecting into the future, which has not even taken place yet. There is no need to worry over something you do not have control over. Assumptions make bad conclusions. You feel you know people. You do not. Honesty is key to clearing the mind. We need a reality check. The human being is on the run from itself. Many of us live as prisoners in our own minds. Moving from doing to being is essential to tap into the flow. This is where source energy lives. Animals live in the flow. They are free to be, free to enjoy life. There are only two forces in the universe, love and fear. Many of us are running around like headless chickens. Therefore, we are caught in perpetual fear and distraction. On the planet, silence is feared. The void is the ex existential vacuum. And that's in quotes. The emptiness where you find your true power. Embracing the silence helps you clear your mind. The internal dialogue, the voices in our heads. I'm not good enough. This negative self-talk fills the minds of many. When we can transcend the negative and the positive, we begin to clear our minds. By seeing the world in duality, divided and fragmented, this is what we become. The external is a reflection of what's taking place within us. Embrace the positive and negative self-talk. Then the mind will not be able to tell the difference and will not disturb you. <laughs> the biorhythms of many of us are out of sync. The new paradigm is about turning into ourselves. That's another way to clear the mind. Do the foods we eat promote our wellness? Are we eating sun foods or plant-based foods? <clears throat> eee. All of this affects our minds on a, molecu on a molecular level. We have to eat foods which raise our vibration higher. Many of us living in a low vibration suffer from a confused mind. The mind becomes cloudy and dull. Once you have lost the spark of life, it's over. To reignite the flame, we have to begin deleting old programs. We have to let go of everything we think we know about life. Many of us are born into a religion. When we remember we are made from the same fabric as the universe, there is no external Messiah coming to save you. We are what we seek. Bam! Amen! All of us freeze your mind. Oh, all of this frees your mind because the search is over. Many of us are on the quest for enlightenment. Enlightenment is knowing how much you do not know. This clears your mind. As you see, you are living in a world of infinite possibilities. <clears throat> the new paradigm is where people of the world connect with fellow kindred spirits to create a whole new world. Clearing your mind is living from your heart. To live from your heart, you have to step outside of linear time, which is man-made. There is enough to go there is enough to go around on the planet. We have been lured into a false sense of security. Dude, this guy is speaking my thoughts, right? Um security security is what many desire. The job that pays a certain amount at the end of the week. This scarcity is what enslaves us. To clear your mind, you have to let go of your security. When something is secure, what happens? It cannot move. In these cities, we have secure jobs, but we cannot move. To clear your mind, you must become fluid like the ocean. The power lies within. We are under a, we are under a big spell. It's frightening. The more you delve deeper, the more you see how universal mind control has taken its toll. There is a war for the hearts and minds of the people. Whoever can enter our mind first wins. To clear our minds, we have to break the spell from within. We have to take back our power. Money is a spell. Race is a spell. Religion is a spell. To be a sovereign being, we must let go of all 
of that. Oh, we must let all of that go. Let go of the illusion. Embrace nature. Bam. Walking around barefoot in the soil can help clear our minds. Many of us are wearing trainers and shoes. How can we feel anything? We are concealed in what we wear. Therefore, we are concealed in how we think. Our spirit is concealed. We do not even know it. The more you begin to take off the layers, the more you begin to clear your mind. Stripping everything bare to its original organic essence is the way to be free. We have, we have been played on this planet, but what goes around comes around. What we treat other life forms on the, how we treat other life forms on the planet is how we are being treated. When we begin to look at animals with respect and do not butcher them, then maybe things will change. On an energetic level, when we butcher animals, their energy is being passed on to us. Information is stored in water. Dr. Emoto's research shows this. Bam, right? Therefore, blood contains water. The animal's information is being passed into millions of people around the globe. They are taking on this fear and agony. This is what we are creating on a mass scale. The world is changing as more people become aware. We are not the only superior life form on the planet. Every life form deserves the same treatment and respect. Or it's just respect, not and respect, just the same treatment dash respect. People are getting the wake, wake up call. This is the information age. The hidden is coming to light. The veil is being lifted. The world apocalypse means removing the veil. All of this will help clear the mind. Do not fear the unknown. Many of us want to stay in our comfort zone because it's safe. If you do not venture out, you will never clear your mind because you will always be wondering what is on the other side. Giving yourself your own unique value system is a great way to clear the mind. Do not let anybody give you value. Love yourself 100%. Yeah, juice! Yay! Welcome! Welcome also all lurkers. <laughs> awesome. Chapter 2. How to raise your frequency. There is only now. Yeah. Why spend it in agony over thoughts that, I mean, not that there's not a time and place to sort through thoughts. I'm just saying mind loops. <laughs> uh. mm, that tea is so good. Pomegranate green tea. So how to raise your frequency. There is only now. Many of us on our journeys come to the crossroads feeling stuck and dense. One of the quickest ways to raise your vibration is to have as much fun as possible. When we go back to our childhood, we were always having fun because we lived in the present. There was no fear. Fear only exists in the future. There is a huge shift happening on earth, a global awakening. No matter where you are, so many feel their whole life in the blink of an eye is changing. Why should it matter about raising the frequency? Within us exists two natures, higher and lower nature. We need both of these parts. To exist only in your lower nature is what's happened to many of us. However, merging with your higher nature taps us into our true authenticity. Children enter this dimension magnificent. Somewhere along the line, we become stuck. We slow down and our vibration decreases. Terminally ill patients have a slow vibration because their life force is withering. This reminds me of that part where um, that, oh, the places you will go, Dr. Seuss book, and then you get to the waiting room. Yeah. Be happy. Oh, being happy increases your vibration. It's not what you do. It's how you feel when you are doing it. To raise this frequency, eat foods which nourish you, not because they taste good, but because they fortify you with supreme strength. Having a healthy relationship with food will make you glow. On my journey, once I let go of heavy foods, fast foods, a healing miracle happened within. Oh, a, he a, he a healing miracle within happened. Food is information from the cosmos. Mother Earth is providing all the information inside food. It's so cool. 
Organic foods give us life and boosts our energy. Many of the food on the planet is drug food. This robs our energy. Natural foods contain enzymes to digest foods. Junk foods have no enzymes to digest food. Therefore, they have to steal healthy cells inside your body to help with the digestion process. Grapes, avocados, kale are some of the <clears throat> living foods which will raise your vibration. How do you know when your vibration is raised? I had this euphoria along my journey. I stopped judging others. To live in non-judgment is the only way to be free. Not judging people will help raise your vibration. A lot of times we see people and ask, how old are you? Where were you born? This is normal. However, analyzing every detail in others will only separate you, which is the grand illusion. Analysis is paralysis. It takes us out of the present moment where we lose power. Children fly high. There is no time to say, I do not like your skin color. We are wondering about the differences on planet Earth. Wait until we go beyond this universe. There are many life forms waiting for us. <laughs> Why do we worry about petty things? <clears throat> when you allow yourself the time to be yourself, this increases your vibration. You tap into your authenticity. We wear masks day to day, a different mask for your family, friends, and work colleagues. By the way, this was written pre-2020 BT dubs, just to so you know. E, I have my I have my thumb on it. Hey Kimba, welcome. Buddy, welcome. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Corey and I have a show tomorrow. It's going to be awesome. All right. Uh, nobody knows who you are. I'll just start it over. We wear masks day to day, a different mask for your family, friends, and work colleagues. Nobody knows who you are. You do not even know yourself. In my early journey, I was going through life like a loose leaf of a branch. Connecting back to source empowers you. To raise your vibration, we must not externalize power. <sighs> Bam. Yeah. We are made from the same fabric cloth as the universe. Therefore, in honoring myself, I honor everything in existence. Right? Many, many people around the globe are worshiping outside of themselves. This slows down your frequency because you are moving away from source, which is you. We are an extension of source energy. Once we, de uh, once we deviant from source, it becomes cold, icy. We feel like our life is falling into pieces. We live in the age of manipulation, great distractions. However, once you go within, you see your infinite power. Heaven is a state of mind. There is no heaven or hell. There is only what you create at this present moment. The angels and demons are archetypes of yourself. We are everything in existence. Connecting with kindred spirits will raise your vibration. Being in the presence of luminous souls. See, like what we're doing right now. Ah, it's so cool. Luminous, luminous. Where's that word? Luminous souls. Zoopa doopa doo. I lost it. I got excited. Infinite. Luminous. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> when we get, uh, it frees us. Existence, connecting with kindred spirits, our vibrations. Oh, here it is. Being in the presence of luminous souls. We attract what we are. Some people say, I do not trust anybody. Well, you will continue to meet people you cannot trust. Bam. <laughs> <clears throat> When we let go of self-limiting belief systems, it frees us, right? We have to know our worth. That's what I'm, that's what, um, I'm learning about right now. <laughs> when we let go of self-limiting belief systems, it frees us. Many have a YOLO attitude on the planet. You only live once. Let's not follow nature. If that's how you want to live, fine cutting ourselves from the infinite possibilities that could, pot could potentially exist diminishes our growth. Life is the eternal mystery. Life is the unknown, which is constantly revealing itself to us. Awakening to a world of infinite possibilities shows us another way. Yeah. 
What kind of music is going out to the masses? I love you, Code. Welcome. Yay. <laughs> so good. Yes. <laughs> so what kind of music is going out to the masses? And how might we be a part of being, I'm, I don't know, right? Let's see. Um, let's learn. Sound can help raise your vibration. Playing an instrument is a wonderful way to heal yourself. Dr. Emoto has shown how sound interacts with water. The way we talk, everything is connected. Let go of fear, false evidence appearing real. Fear is a self-created feeling based on a pseudo-realization we do not have the cap capacity to overcome a perceived experience. Everything is based on the perception we have of ourselves. To have the best perception of ourselves, we must let go of who we think we are. I am not a name, nation, job, religion, or Democrat. I am, period. What we see of people is a tiny side of their true selves. We are multidimensional beings having a human experience. There is only now. Tune into the moment and do what you have always dreamed. Aligning with your inner truth makes you powerful beyond measure. <laughs> cool. All right. Chapters, chapter three. Five ways to relieve panic. Smile more. It's good. I love smiling. It feels really good to smile, right? Let's do some tea. Yum. These are some tools which have helped me on my journey to relieve panic, stress, and anxiety. One, bring emotions into the present. The freeze is where many of us stand still in the, in the past or future. We must experience the now to access our true power. Clapping when you have the freeze moment will help you enter the present moment. Body awareness is essential for dealing with panic. Many of us are out of tune with ourselves. We do not know when we are anxious. To free yourself from panic, realize the body is the unconscious mind. <laughs> the body, mind, and spirit are interconnected and interchangeable. Cool, right? Fluid. When you feel your body becoming tense, breathe deeply. Breathing deeply improves the blood circulation around the body. You bring inner calmness and balance. Hey, speaking of that, I just want to say thank you so much to um, <clears throat> um, Emoji King for the breathing technique. I was having some serious anxiety this week. And um, the breathing through each nostril, that helped me so much. Thank you so much. I, I really appreciate you. How do you feel at the present moment? Many of us are anxious because we are thinking in the past or future. Become present to your body. Ask yourself, how do I feel? Automatically, your body relaxes. Ooh, feeling tense is a choice. Tense mind equals tense body and spirit. Awesome, right? Okay. Two, own your emotions and take responsibility. Bam. We must be responsible for how we feel. Seeing we have no control of what others think or feel, we must let go of attempting to change others' perceptions of ourselves. The perception of ourselves is the only thing that matters. How do you see yourself? Remembering we are creating our own reality based on thoughts and feelings helps us take responsibility for where we find ourselves. It's easy to blame others for our panic. How we respond to others is key in letting go of anxiety. Three, change your focus. Do your focus, oh, do you focus on what you want or what you fear? Visualizing where you want to be will alleviate your anxiety. When you let go, snap out of it. Many people are caught in drama 
So this is what creates our reality. To free your heart, it's essential to release the panic. But first, our minds must be free. Thinking outside of the box, not thinking in a linear way, not closing ourselves to others, all helps to relieve panic. By opening up yourself to the world, smiling more, the panic disappears. <laughs> Four, changing your lifestyle and know thyself. Oh, change your lifestyle and know thyself. Ask yourself, what am I doing to promote wellness in my life? Are you in the right environment? By taking a simple walk through nature, your mind clears. Do not go where the crowd do not go where the crowd is all the time. Take time to be alone and connect with your true self. The environment is everything. To know thyself, we have to ask ourselves, what does our soul resonate with? What brings you joy or happiness? I was just writing a list about that last night, like asking myself who I was. And then um, I just started writing down a lot of the things that I like <laughs> to do and be. Yeah. What brings you joy or happiness? Are you doing that? Are you living the life you want to live? Many of us are caught in panic because we are not doing what we love to do. Exercising helps release the powerful endorphins, making us feel better and calmer. The relationship we have with time must change if we are to be panic-free. Nowadays, I do not wear a watch because I see we are limitless beings who are timeless. Many of us are time slaves. The power lies within your hands. Will you take back your power? Hmm. The lifestyles many live make us feel inadequate. Right now on the planet, it's time for elevation, time to reclaim our power. Much of the fears we have emanate from externalizing power, giving it away. To access our true power, we must go on the inward journey and take our place in the universe once again. <clears throat> the lifestyle we live includes the foods we consume. What you, uh, you are what you eat, drink, and think. Amen. Ask yourself, what am I putting into my body? Do I feel calmer or more tense? Live raw plant-based foods have a soothing energy on the body. Nervousness decreases once we let go of junk foods. Feel liberated by simply changing your diet. Are you creating enough time for yourself? Are you loving yourself? Many do not love themselves enough. We are caught in looking for the validation from someone or something external to us. When you give yourself, when you give yourself value, it does not matter how much money you make, you feel at peace. Are you doing what you are passionate about? Do you love the image you have of yourself? This is, the, this is essential when letting go of panic. Have fun, celebrate, enjoy life to the fullest because you are worthy. Knowing you are worthy frees your spirit from the chains of fear. Having a lighter heart requires letting go of toxic energy, always purifying yourself. Let go of all that holds you back, the memories, events, people, anything that makes you feel worse. Leave it at the door and walk outside of the house. How much are you carrying? Becoming lighter is the only way to fly. This is the only way to relieve panic. <clears throat> Five, stop, com uh, stop competing and comparing yourself with others. Everybody you see is living their own unique journey. You do not have to fight or survive for your piece of cake. Everyone is unique. I am another yourself in a different time and space. I love that. I love the way he says that. I'm going to say it again. Everyone is unique. I am another yourself in a different time and space. When you stop competing, you fall into your own niche and panic fades away. You do not have, you do not have to win. Running up against someone else is an illusion. There is enough for everyone. Looking at the world in abundance diminishes anxiety and allows you to breathe. Everyone is here for a different reason, but find your true gift and transform your world. We are here to have the most beautiful time on planet Earth. Let's have fun. Yeah. I like it. 
Chapter four, love yourself 100%. Where do you feel most free? Go there. Mm. I felt the most free in the Upper Peninsula. I loved it there. But I also feel really free here doing the narrations. I really like this. The new paradigm is about seeing your true worth as an infinite being. To live the most awesome human experience, to love yourself, you must keep alive and tap into your inner child. Where do you feel most free? Go there. Within that special place, you will find your true power. Many of us are not happy where we are, but fail to see we are creating our own reality through choices and thoughts. The power lies within us. Loving yourself opens you up to others and expands your heart space. Before you can love anybody, you have to love yourself. The notion of love thy neighbor has become popular on the planet. This is all well and good, but many people suffer from a low self-esteem. Low confidence levels emanate from the validation from someone else, the waiting for approval. <laughs> Letting go of society's expectations is the greatest way to begin to love yourself. Excuse me. Throw away the TV as far as you can. Much of our ideas about the world come from the television. Who controls your perception controls your reality. Once you begin to love yourself, you see how subliminal manipulation is used in every area of our society. Dude, right? <laughs> uh, someone, someone is advertising this product to become happy. No, self-love begins internally first. Nobody can give you anything you do not already have. All your experiences are coming deep within yourself. It's all you. Loving yourself is not about being a narcissist. It's when we tap into our true self. We can only do this when we give ourselves time and are not so hard on ourselves. <laughs> Yesterday, I was like, um, I was, I was, um, feeling challenged by some of my thoughts and emotions. And um, then I was feeling angry at myself for feeling that way. And then I was thinking, dude, feeling this way isn't helping me bring or feel the future that I want. And also feeling angry at myself for feeling this way is also not helping, which actually did make me breathe a little easier. Just saying. Letting go of this idea of perfection is a great way to love yourself 100%. Many people we view as beautiful may not feel beautiful inside. It takes changing our perception to love ourselves 100%. Seeing yourself as a unique sovereign being who came to this planet to be, power, to be a powerful co-creator generates the self-love energy. <laughs> Since we are made from the same fabric as the universe, we are not here to worship externally. We are here to serve and exchange with one another, not one single deity or job. In loving yourself, you have to take responsibility where you find yourself. The body is a vehicle. We are in the driving seat. Amazing things happen when you love yourself. Accept your flaws are not flaws. They are hidden aspects of yourself. Many of us do not want to enter the shadow land. We are afraid to see the deep, dark aspects of ourselves. The darkness is equally as important as the light. In our darkest moments, we become illuminated. That's what it takes to love yourself. We must go into the deep depths of our soul to find the pearls that lie within. Pearls! That's been a re recurring theme in my life. The time has come to love yourself. Stop competing with others. This takes you out of your element. Be happy, content, and, fulfill and fulfilled with yourself because we are where we choose to be. <laughs> Why desire to be someone else? Yeah. I, me too, Code. I appreciate you so much. I'm so thankful that you're my friend, that you're in my life. Yeah, dude. Why desire to be someone else? When you love yourself 100%, you see yourself as an artist. You appreciate everyone's unique gift. There is nobody like you. So why are you worried about someone taking your place? Many do not love themselves. They say, if only I become someone else, everything will be perfect. We can never become another. 
all we can do is accept ourselves 100% and start loving ourselves. <clears throat> Chapter five, page 22. Why am I single? You cannot force love. Boom. <laughs> you know? <clears throat> On my journey, I used to ask this question. However, I realized something was missing in my life. Nobody was to blame. It was the relationship I had with myself. Sexual energy is the energy that permeates everything in existence. In essence, sexual energy is creative energy. Many of us on the planet are wondering where our beloved is. If you wonder why you have not met the dream woman slash man, don't worry, your time will come. For so many of us, we want a quick fix. The greatest relationship we can have is with ourselves. Through my metaphor metamorphosis, I saw you have to love yourself first before you can love any or you have to love yourself before you can love anybody else. When you embrace your flaws, gifts, and talents, you begin to accept other people's flaws, gifts, and talents. Nobody is perfect. Perfectionism is a curse, although nature is a perfect. It does actually say that is a perfect. <laughs> There is no dream person. You have to take on board the good, bad, and the ugly. Many single people have a checklist. Ultimately, we are all looking for our reflection. We are looking for the other half of ourselves, which is, in essence, our higher selves. Once you tap into your higher self, the marriage happens between yourself. The union of the body and the mind, soul, and spirit. This is the true marriage. Going to a temple or church does not make you married. True marriage is within yourself. Then you meet someone else. Then the two holes become complete. E. <laughs> Got to get a sip. Mm. Ay. Many people around the world are fragmented within themselves. You not you cannot be half looking for you cannot be half looking for another half because now you have two incomplete halves. You know. There are times, seasons and cycles within the universe. It may not be tomorrow. You may find your partner, but it will happen. We all should be sharing this life journey with someone we can help evolve and in return help us evolve, pushing us towards our greatest, highest potential. We must merge with the greater part of ourselves. Letting go of society's expectations, dates, and calendars is key to meeting your beloved. Instant gratification has been the way of the world for so long. I want it now. Love does not work like that. Forming deep relationships take a long time in terms of developing an inner intimate knowing, developing a deeper intimacy, and helping another person take off the mask requires surrender 100%. The more you tap into who you are and become whole, the more you will attract people to you. You will attract your reflection. We attract what we are. What we send out is what we attract. Many women say, all men are dogs. They only want sex. Guess what? These are the kinds of men they attract. <laughs> By thinking like this, they are sending a signal to the universe, the infinite genie, and the universe will, rep will reply to you. Your wish is my command. Oh my gosh. That means, oh my gosh, I have so much cool stuff coming. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> uh, okay. Um... Once you open your heart to the universe to meet your reflection and let go, it manifests. There are millions of single people around the world. This is not a bad thing. Sometimes it may be from choice. Some take the time to find themselves and discover who they are. Going to the wilderness is best gone alone. Dude. Many people in relationships are not happy. They just don't want to be alone. Some single people are using this time to reconnect back to their true inner power and develop 
their clarity and inner balance. This is in order for when they do meet that extraordinary person they fall in love with, they know instantly because they have done the inner work. <laughs> not doing the inner work can leave us single. Once you work on yourself, you see you do not have to search. Along my journey, I used to search. I got into a relationship with a sense of urgency. So many of us are afraid to lose the one we love. We can only lose what does not belong to us. <laughs> I do not own anybody on the planet. We must allow others to become themselves. In many of our relationships, we feel certain people belong to us. That's why many relationships don't last in today's world. It's based on ownership. Being single can also be a fun experience. Many ancient masters possessed such a deep connection to their heart, they never needed a partner. They developed a true marriage between the yin feminine essence and the yang mas masculine essence, which exists within all of us. On earth, it's great to be in a loving relationship with someone to raise superhuman children. Ha <laughs> ha! I, I thought about doing that too sometimes. Being single should not worry us. Do not be anxious. The more anxious you are, the more you deviate from your true authentic self. I would rather someone hate me for who I am than to love me for who I am not. <laughs> there are lots of internet dating sites. I even went on a few. However, when I let go of the search, everything manifested. Online dating is on the rise, with many hoping to land next to their dream partner. Once you clear your senses... When you see the one, you will know. Single people must throw away the checklist. Life is, is dynamic. The only permanent being change. Nobody is ever one thing. We only show others what we want them to see. Along my journey, I told myself I am going to let go of finding the perfect person. Instead, I will work on myself and be open to a fellow kindred spirit. Everything changed. Life is forever changing. Some people are in the most wonderful relationships, but it's just time. Oh, wait, wait. Some people are in the most wonderful relationships, but it's just time to move on. Every single person we, oh, wait, every single person we are in a relationship with is a teacher. Some of us are recovering from horrendous relationships. Seeing that we attract relationships to us allows us to take responsibility and feel alive. Being single is a choice we all have. It's not negative or positive. It is whatever you make it. There are beautiful people around the planet asking, where is my other half? Your other half is your higher self. Once you see a reflection in someone else, you connect with them. If your creation is no longer needed, you connect with someone else. You cannot force love. Thank you, Ralph. Yeah, you know, one day at a time. Chapter six, how to deal with universal mind control. The power lies within. Yay! Boom shakalaka pop! <laughs> Welcome, Heidi. I love you. Yay! <laughs> awesome. All right. Have you ever watched a TV program? It was so hard to get up. I think that's exactly what it says. Have you ever watched a TV program? It was so hard to get up. Soaps, dramas, comedy shows, the sports keep us entertained. Along my journey, I have seen how this is one big distraction. The whole world is waking up to see how we are addicted to so many things outside of ourselves. Everywhere you go, there seems to be some kind of distraction. An advert, billboard poster, newspaper, television show. It seems everyone is after your mind. We live in a society of instant gratification, quick fixes, and 24-7 grinds. To free your mind, you must let go of society's expectations. Fitting in is not the solution, but rather becoming yourself in a world attempting to change you every minute. Ha ha ha. There is a war for the hearts and minds of the people. It's all a test. 
Once we turn off the noise and distraction, we discover our true selves as brilliant, luminous beings. The television tells lies to your vision. We have to tell our vision. We waste endless hours watching other people's lives, but ask yourself, what are you doing with your life? Seeing your favorite football player scoring a goal can give many an, a euphoric feeling. However, many live through these sports stars vicariously. Whose life are you more interested in, yours or someone else's? All oh, oh, Other people's lives seem far more entertaining, glamorous, and glorious than ours. Many of us on the planet have been asleep and we do not even want to find the alarm clock. Ignorance is bliss. Just as long as we are dancing or singing, we are happy. Ignorance is not bliss. Many people are dying permanently. Their lives have been turned into a living hell because they have no knowledge of self. What freed me on my journey was seeing we are living in an amusing park, a great show. However, Realizing you are the director, you reclaim your power. Wow. I, I had a dream like that. <laughs> cool. A lot of people go to college or university, but they come out in huge debt so they have to be working for the rest of their lives. This perpetual cycle is what's keeping humanity in a low vibration. A lot of people have masters and degrees, but are flipping burgers at McDonald's. What's happened? We fail to see the greatest education we can have is becoming intimate with ourselves. We live in a matrix game dream, matrix game dream world built around power and control. Fighting the external world will not change it. Be the change you wish to see. What you fight you give power to. In essence, resistance makes stronger. Bam, right? Magic can only take place when you are not paying attention. The distraction works through separation. Look at religion. My God is better than yours. We must be free from all authority, including yourself. <laughs> <clears throat> Once you can be free from your own authority, you see enlightenment is knowing how much you do not know. The distraction is always to externalize your power. The distraction is always to be busy. We feel everything is happening so fast, but that's the trick. Many of us are in a hurry to get nowhere fast. Harvesting cows for milk and chickens for eggs is a modern preoccupation. However, we are also being harvested and manipulated on a grand level. Being free of mind control is about delving into the hidden depths of your free spirit or of your spirit and entering the vast shadow land. When you do not follow the crowd, you go beyond the crowd, finding the pearls that lie within. Once you see... You are not what society tells you. You tap into your infinite power. Ooh. AF, I miss you. Yay. Welcome. Awesome. I get a sip. Did I read that whole thing? I don't know. I got excited. To remember you cannot save everyone frees you, and you see we have to allow others the freedom of experiencing their own reality and truth. Embracing nature is one of the best ways. I have, I have dealt with universal mind control. Plant your feet in Gaia and feel the orgasmic energy. Letting go of stress by surrounding yourself with fellow kindred spirits carrying beautiful energies helps clear our mind. Eating fruits and sun foods, which bring life into our body, also helps us maintain balance. Let go of fear and find your true power. The power lies within. Bam. Awesome. Yeah. Right? <clears throat> Chapter 7. How to deal with difficult people. What you focus on grows. Right? <laughs> How to deal with people you can't stand? 
It may be your next door neighbor, friend, or even close family member. Throughout my journey, I have seen there are no positive people or negative people. There is only resonance. Five magnificent ways to deal with difficult people I use in my daily life are one, do not take it personal. A lot of people's problems are not our problems. They are theirs. You can't please everyone. If someone does not like you, that's too bad. All you can do is smile at them. Many people project personal issues onto you. Two, stay calm. How we feel internally is how we carry ourselves externally. Once you can smile, when you are dealing with someone you do not resonate with, you feel lighter and enter inner balance. I did that today. <laughs> awesome. Uh, keep your head up while talking to people. Remember your body is the unconscious mind. Many people walk around their whole life with heads facing downwards towards the ground. Keeping straight bent backs helps us stand our, gra stand our grand. Cool. Confronting people is not the answer, but do not suppress feelings. Remember the power lies within or the power is within. Breathing easy is essential. Many difficult people want us to fall into their reaction trap. <laughs> Whenever you fight to give, oh wait, whatever you fight to give energy to, therefore resistance makes stronger. Whatever you fight, you give energy to. Therefore resistance makes stronger, right? Becoming silent within helps you develop inner strength courage and balance the difficult person is no longer difficult there are no difficult people it's our interpretation of what is difficult everyone finds different people difficult everything in the universe is based on res resonance based on the law of affinity therefore we attract what we are huh? <clears throat> three Put things in perspective. Stop worrying and start living. Woo, it's tickling my face. How important is this difficult person? <laughs> to move past any difficult person or situation, you have to let go. We must change the way we react to people before we change the way we interact with them. Everything is based on how we react. We have to take responsibility. There is so much happening in the world. Why would you let someone's fear consume you? How are you going to use your energy? The more you focus on something, the more it grows, therefore. Change your focus. Putting things in perspective helps you to fly beyond them. Ask yourself, how is this person holding up a mirror to me? Many people we call difficult are in essence helping us discover our true selves, right? Right? They are allowing us to see unresolved issues within ourselves. Taking responsibility for your own feelings and actions ensures other people are no longer the cause. Right? That's why I stopped drinking. <laughs> Four, put yourself in their shoes. We are all coming from different backgrounds, having empathy, which is the ability to recognize other people's emotions. It frees you. Seeing where others are coming from, how they see the world, means you can rise above any situation. Learning how to not take people so serious, you see this difficult person as no longer difficult, but a walk in the park. Five, keep it moving. Do not dwell on what difficult people have to say, in one ear, out the other. In life, the universe gives everyone a job. These difficult people are needed on the planet because they help you tap into your true self. Nature has a sense of humor, and that's what we need when dealing with difficult people. The more you think of other people who bring you down, the more you become them. When you smile, the energy has to pass through you first before it reaches the other person. The attitude we take is essential when dealing with difficult people, how we respond. We cannot control how other people act, only how we react, right? We came to this planet to have the most expansive human experience possible, 
and awaken to a world of infinite possibilities. There is no time for petty thoughts. You are worth more. <laughs> Every difficult person you meet is there as a teacher for you. Once you pass the test, they are here to teach you. They no longer become difficult. They are difficult because they are the test for you. Your greatest adversary is your greatest friend. Wow. <laughs> you know? Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Words do hurt. Words are vibrations. We must not give other people's words power over our internal condition. Remaining neutral is key. Changing your internal environment to uplift your spirit and inner balance. Lots of us place ourselves in hostile environments where there are lots of difficult people around. Connect with kindred spirits. Many difficult people take away our joy, but they are not negative. Only there is no resonance there. Every moment spent thinking over someone undesirable, you are taking away a moment of pure bliss. Learn from the past, but don't live there. The emotional drive-by is a term I coined regarding how other people dump their garbage onto you. They drive up, leave all their problems with you, then speed off in an abrupt hurry. Be aware of the emotional drive-by. We have to purify our senses whilst dealing with difficult people. We came here to shine. Let nobody take away your glow. Chapter 8, page 33. <clears throat> All right. The wonders of whole foods. You are what you eat and feed your senses. By changing your diet, you will change your lifestyle and outlook forever, boosting your energy. Today, I have an appreciation for people in spite of what family and friends think. Still persevere and go with what their hearts tell them. Yeah. Food has been a major component along my journey of self-healing. Natural foods such as bananas, dates, and mangoes keep us more alive and awake. Eating less processed foods and more whole foods will restore the body's natural energy systems. Whole foods are nature's natural original produce. They come with complete enzymes to help digest the food. Much of the food we eat in today's world is devoid of enzymes, hence we are stuck, constipated. The body has a question mark. How will I digest this food? This food. <laughs> Stealing from healthy cells is the only way the body can compensate and digest the food. Many young people eat candy and fast food, however, remain glowing. One day, however, everything changes when the body can no longer replace healthy cells, when you begin to age. The bleaching of foods, for instance, brown bread into white, has made many people unwell on the planet. Always go for the most, most organic as opposed to the most refined. Nature has blessed fruits, vegetables, and grains with all the nutrients and minerals we need to thrive. Milk made from nuts such as cashew has all the calcium the body needs. What the mass production of food has done is to strip foods of their nutrients, bleach them, refine them with sugars, and fortify them with nutrients. Nature's food is perfect. So why change it? We think we can, we think we can contribute. Oh, we think we can continue to overload the body with junk, but it will catch up with us in the end. The liver does a great job cleansing the body but it needs help from us putting in high vibration food. Get creative in the kitchen. Mix different colors and flavors. Have fun. Yeah, I've got a juice fast coming up here soon. Uh, and this is making me feel pumped about it. Avocados are my favorite fruit filled with vitamin E and oleic acid. It contains uh, carotenoid. Is that how you say it? Carotenoid? carotenoid uh, lutein, which prevents against 
macular degeneration caused from staring at computers, computer screens too long. There is a big myth surrounding food. This is the protein myth. We worry about not getting enough. The reason why people eat meat, they will tell you, is because of protein. Protein, protein, protein. Many of the animals we kill for food obtain protein from the grass, plants, and vegetables. It's true. It's like secondhand protein, BT dubs. Water and air contain protein. Nature is abundant and gives us everything we need. We cannot survive without air for more than a few minutes. It's the chi which keeps life flowing. Eating whole foods have transformed my life in unimaginable ways. The majority of us are under a huge spell and programmed. Culture and tradition have enormous influences over our food choices. I do not feel people who eat meat are different from those who do not, or vegans are more superior. All of these are labels, tags. Doing what resonates with your heart and soul is key. There is no merit points for anybody. Bam! I, I, I feel that. Not only does what we eat affect our wellness, also how we think and our attitude. We are what we feed all our senses. There are some people on a plant-based plant -based diet, but also give off a toxic energy through the world and actions they harbor. We have to become whole in all areas of life. Respecting all life forms has helped me on my journey. Animals were created for their own reasons, not for our consumption. We are not emotionally ready to kill our own food. There is a pattern within everything in nature. It's no surprise what we do to animals, we do onto ourselves, more so the planet. We cannot kill in violence and expect peace on earth. Seeing you, seeing you can impact the ecosystem by living in harmony with the universe is liberating. How we treat other animals is not a sign of an evolved species right now on the planet. We have so much work to do to see animals have their own purpose. We are supposed to be helping animals, not eating them. Everyone sees things in different ways, but awaken to your truth within. Right? We can all coexist in harmony on the planet. I have friends and family who consume meat, and I love them nevertheless. Where, uh, where you are in your own energetic vibration will dictate what foods you choose and how you think and see the world. Organic foods reveal the colors and patterns of life. It's about going back to nature, embracing it, and loving life. They reveal the interconnectedness between everything, and you feel lighter for it. The sun has cooked the food has cooked the food for us already. Live foods contain all the nourishment and healing energies from the sun. Haha, <laughs> I love that. Cooking food to death has become trendy, but nature has already cooked the food in its natural state. High temperature foods kills off enzymes inside the food. A gentle steaming will do less harm. Look to consume foods as close to their original state as possible. Life is a wonderful journey. No matter where you go, you see nature's infinite abundance. Chapter 9. Can psychedelics take you to heaven? Heaven is a state of mind. <clears throat> heaven is a state of mind, not some place you go after you die. But in a moment, uh, but in the but a moment you create the present. Okay, I got, I got to try that again. <laughs> Heaven is a state of mind, not some place you go after you die, but a moment you create in the present. Many are searching for enlightenment or nirvana. I have come to see enlightenment is knowing how much you don't know. Many people are not happy with the state of the world and do not want to be here. A psychedelic substance is a psychoactive drug whose primary action is to alter cognition and perception. The common psychedelics are LSD, ayahuasca, magic mushrooms, and salvia. Salvia is an entheo en entheogen and entheogen used in Mexico for centuries to awaken and generate the power within. Entheogen, a term derived from the Greek Entheos directly translates to mean having God, Theos, within, 
or more loosely translated as inspired. And genesthe, genesthe meaning to generate. Hmm. Cool. The Greeks. Love the Greeks. Ooh, somebody's thinking about me. <laughs> Rah. Oh, right. Oh, stay up there, you. Rah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Entheos was typically used to describe poets, musicians, and other artists who were believed to retrieve their gifts from the divine. Cool. <laughs> the word ent entheogen thus exposes itself as meaning that which generates God, the divine, in a person. Oh, words. I love them. The amazing herb salvia was used to induce powerful visions for healing and was also prescribed remedially for headaches and rheumatism. Ooh, my nose is so itchy. Tanya, yay! Welcome in, my girl. Good to see you. Awesome. Psychedelics, or actually, let's get a sip. Psychedelics have been known to create altered states of consciousness and unlock the hidden mysteries of the brain. In ancient Egypt, people took the blue lotus plant, Nymphaea cerulea. I have some of those seeds in my fridge. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's so good. Okay. I want to I want to I want to see the lilies. Okay. Its psychoactive properties are now being rediscovered. On the walls, Egyptian art shows members of society holding the blue lotus flower in reverence and praise. There is a possibility this flower may have given ancient Egyptians altered states of reality to create a world of infinite possibilities. Is that the one I have? No, is it the lotus or the lo No, I think I have the lotus. It's, it's a gamble, right? It's a gamble. We'll see if they grow. Cannabis and marijuana are herbs which many use to feel high and calm their senses. Cannabis is a leafy plant which grows wild in many of the tropic and temperature and temperate areas of the world. It is cultivated both indoors and out for the production of its flowering tops. A compound found in cannabis could halt the spread of many forms of aggressive cancer, scientists say. Researchers found that the compound called cannabino oh cannab cannabid cannabidial 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 researchers researchers found that the compound called cannabidial had the ability to switch off the gene responsible for metastasis metastasis in the aggressive form of breast, of breast cancer. Importantly, this substance does not produce the psychoactive properties of the cannabis plant. The term from the California Pacific Medical Center in San Francisco first spotted its potential five years ago after it stopped the proliferation of human breast cancer cells in the lab. A Harvard study also says marijuana cures cancer. Many herbs are still illegal despite the evidence they may have medical benefits. Many people have overdosed on LSD. This is why the drug has been banned in many parts of the world. The fear of psychedelics in the collective mind is prevalent. They are seen as something not to partake in. Dangerous. Many countries have banned all kinds of psych psychedelics altogether. On my journey, I have seen that psychedelics and herbs are earth en enhancers and have a great intrinsic healing power. The human body is an amazing instrument. I see the power within us. And once you know thyself, you can create your own natural high. The brain is the largest pharmacy in the world. I know it can produce all the healing properties of the herbs people take. Cool. I know it can produce all the healing properties of the herbs people take, right? So cool. We must activate our pineal glands to tap into our infinite reservoir of power. 
Many of us take herbs, but it can act as a crutch if we do not take responsibility for our own internal condition, right? Once you become dependent on external drugs, you face the possibility of deep addiction, living in fear if you are without them. Living free as a sovereign being, you see everything exists within yourself. We are plants, stars, the universe itself. Paying for herbs can also be an expensive affair, but many people live in debt because of it. We cannot be sure how pure the herbs we take are if we are not picking them. There is a chance they could have been mixed with other harmful herbs, giving us unwanted symptoms. Many have said there is a conspiracy why certain herbs are banned, because they do not want people to access their true power and enter other dimensions. Natural herbs found in Mother Nature are extraordinary. However, you do not need them to get to heaven. After all, heaven is a state of mind. Know thyself. Awesome. Wow, this is great. I'm going to be able to read through this whole thing in just like way shorter time than I thought. Just a couple, two or three hours. Wow, yeah, I'm like halfway through right now. Okay, so I'm just about to go into chapter 10. Um, I'm going to pause this just because I have to pee something fierce. So I will be right back, you guys. I'm going to speed pee. Okay. <laughs> it wasn't a speed pee, but it wasn't, it wasn't that slow, right? <laughs> okay. Yeah. The cat down the road. <laughs> I love you code. <sighs> okay. Um, yeah, it's my short hair. Oh. Okay. We're halfway through. This is so cool. Thank you, Ralph Smart. Again, thank you so much, man. I love that you've been an influence in my life for a decade, dude. It's cool. All right. Chapter 10. I lost my job. What should I do? Every day is a new start. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> thank you, Heidi. Losing a job can be devastating, but we must never give up hope and see this as a great window of opportunity to follow our dreams. Depression and fear follow joblessness. Therefore, it's essential to keep spirits high by any means necessary. The jobs we have give many people value, meaning, and purpose in their lives. Once we lose our jobs, so many people feel undervalued and diminished, not where they belong. The panic alarm rings and fear begins to consume many people's hearts and minds. Feeling stuck, not knowing what to do or where to turn can make us feel alone. Losing a job can feel like our world is coming to an abrupt end and the whole world is falling apart. We must remember the way out of the dark tunnel is to see the light at the end. Once we can let go of society's expectations, we begin to free ourselves. Creating your own unique value system is the first step to overcoming job loss and getting rid of depression. Giving yourself your own unique definition is a great way to not allow anybody to place value over you, right? Many on the planet suffer from an identity crisis. The jobs we have give us an identity. Without them, we feel empty. 
Letting go of status anxiety is a great way to be when dealing with unemployment. Many people lose jobs and feel loneliness. Therefore, connecting to a community or spiritual source is essential to give your life purpose. When you lose your job, you find your work. <laughs> we are living in a sea of infinite potential, a world where anything is possible. Everything is based on belief. How you think affects how you feel. This may be the most rewarding time of your life. Grab this opportunity to experience life to the max. Catch up with old friends, go out, have fun, or why not take that holiday you've always dreamed of? Let go of guilt. If you have just lost a job, see you can always find another one. By cultivating talents and gifts, you will always have a job. When you can offer to society, what you can offer to society depends how you cultivate your gifts. Gifts. Embrace your passion and do what you love in this period and recognize you can create your own job. Bam, right? It's cool. Working a nine to five job is not for everyone. There are other options such as becoming your own boss. This will take self-discipline. Waking up early is essential for getting the most out of yourself whilst you have whilst you have not got a job. Feel better by having a similar wake-up routine as you had in your previous job. Also, physical exercise will boost your spirits by releasing powerful endorphins to make you feel alive once again. I concur! <laughs> it's, it feels like, yeah, a gift that we give ourselves. Be thankful you're alive and count your many blessings. Remember, you have your health. You have life. Appreciating this as a wondrous opportunity will help you put life in perspective, which is key to not going off the rails. Love yourself 100% and see that you are a marvelous, brilliant, luminous being. Losing a job cannot take that from you. Search for another job if that's your passion. If not, take time to see what you love to do and see if you can create a job around it. Once you can offer a unique service to humanity, you will always have a job. And you will generate currency, which is energy. Some people do not work at all. And that is also fine. How beautiful. Oh, hey, what happened to my camera? Start cam. I don't know. <laughs> How beautiful uh, is it to rest and do nothing afterwards? We must see nature always provides if we surrender and see we are living in a world of infinite abundance. We create our reality based on our thoughts and feelings. What you say becomes bond. Changing the words you use to describe your state will change how you feel about yourself. Saying, I am worthy, will create a better self-image of yourself. Everything is based around perception. The perception we have of ourselves is far more important than the perceptions others have of, ha others have of us. That's the secret. The passion you have is really your job in disguise. Oh. oh. The I'm worthy one. That has been a part of my daily uh, mantra manifestations. And um, I think that's part of the why, like, my whole life got shook up. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Oh my gosh, my itchy nose. <laughs> Yay, we laugh together. <laughs> it's so good. Chapter 11, page 42. Five ways to build a better relationship. Changing the water of the plant makes it grow. The greatest relationship we can have is with ourselves. Before we can love anybody, we must begin to love ourselves. The five ways to build a better relationship are communication, appreciation, passion, trust, and fun. Yeah. One, communication. Holy itchy nose. The voice is the essence. How we speak to our partner is essential in building a closer bond. Words hold power. 
It's not the words you use, but the energy behind the words. Words mold and shape matter, using words to heal one another, bring the best out of our relationships. Nurturing each other starts with creating free time for one another to express our true feelings. Two, appreciation. Do not take your partner for granted. Appreciating your love is a great way to, connect, to create a harmonious relationship. When we forget to value each other, we become complacent and end up throwing away the very person we cherish. Keeping alive the flame of love requires tremendous dedication and praising your partner every now and again will bring you closer together. Three, passion. Deep passion is the driving force of any relationship. The more passion you two have, the more the relationship thrives. To cultivate passion, we must tap into our infinite power by eating healthy organic foods and placing ourselves in an environment which uplifts our spirits. The more energy we can access, the more passion energy is available to us both. As soon as our energy levels decrease, our passion begins to wither away like the leaves of a branch. Letting go of society's expectations and stress is an awesome way to increase the passion towards each other and live the dream. Allowing your partner to look at someone else and appreciate their beauty frees both of you. Four, trust. Wait a second. Allowing your partner to look at someone else and appreciate their beauty frees both of you. Okay, so four, trust. Trust is essential when building a better relationship. We can only lose what does not belong to us. You cannot force love. Owning someone else is an illusion. You can capture the body, but never the heart. That has to be given to you. Respecting each other to walk in pure freedom is showing how trust can be used. So you both can see a deeper beauty within each other. Five, have fun. Building a better relationship is having fun with your partner, right? Being silly, play games. Be silly, play games. Have a little dance or two. Keeping alive the inner child within each other will bring you both to the first time you set eyes on each other, that magical moment. The magic will begin to blossom when you can laugh and smile with each other, not taking life so serious. Remember to have fun is to open your heart. Both of your hearts will grow with love and you will both be flying in pure euphoria. Chapter 12, page 44. I've seen the 44s like crazy this week, dude. Hey, yeah, it's crazy. It's cool. <clears throat> Emoji King, yay, welcome and thank you. <laughs> My nose is starting to get red from how much I'm itching it, but it's itchy. <laughs> how to heal yourself. The answer lies within. The only person who can heal yourself is you. No doctor or healer can heal you. They can only act as a guide to help you awaken your infinite power of self-healing. Heal yourself by breathing the fresh prana, walk through nature, live in the moment. The biggest disease you have is not of the body, but of the mind. Once you change the way you think, you can begin to change the way the body heals itself. We live in the world we are thinking of. We create our reality through thoughts and feelings, tangible realities which govern our body universe. How does disease begin? Many of us are in disease because we are working against the body, not with it. Relaxation is what you are. Stress is what you think you should be. <laughs> That's cool. Stress is the biggest contributor to ill health, and it starts in the mind. Amen! Once you change your mind, your whole world changes. The interpretation of what you think is possible. Scientists say we have over 70 trillion cells within the body. I say we have an unlimited amount. Anything is possible. It all starts with belief. It's all BS. Belief system. <laughs> When we have been told the body is separate from the mind from Newtonian physics. Oh, no, no. We have been told the body is separate from the mind in, in Newtonian physics. The body, mind, and spirit are all interconnected. The body is the unconscious mind. 
Renee Descartes. Oh no. Did I say that wrong? I think I did. Descartes? Descartes? Eee! Renee Descartes. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, is the father. See, that's why I should know how to say that. I apologize. Of Western philosophy brought in the idea of mind-body separation, which still reigns supreme. There is no separation in nature. There is only a great relationship based on cooperation. Everything is connected. We exist as one. Until we can understand this, we will always be stuck. Disease is an energy imbalance emanating from our spiritual body, which the mind processes and we feel in our physical bodies. To heal yourself, you must love yourself 100%, surrender and accept the body as your loyal servant, working in your favor always. <laughs> Letting go of the mind is essential for the body to work to its optimum performance. Thought is an inter interference. Ooh, I'm reading that again. Letting go of the mind is essential for the body to work to its optimum performance. Thought is an interference. Living in the moment, we tap into the field of our true unlimited potential. We open the gift, the present. We must take responsibility and see we are co-creators. The power lies within. Belief plays a huge role in healing. If you say my disease is incurable, you are right. If you say my disease is curable, you are right. Right? Freaking Western medicine trying to tell people that you can't cure this and that. Come on now already. Opening ourselves to a world of infinite possibilities is, is essential to allow our body to re reach its highest infinite potential. Right? It's so cool. Embrace nature and learn how everything coexists in harmony with one another. We have three big misconceptions in science regarding the health and well-being of ourselves. The first mis misconception is we only live in a material universe. Isaac Newton, the father, Newton, the father of Western physics, thought we lived in a universe of fixed laws and the human being was a well-behaved machine. <laughs> Man, what are those cookies called? New, new, anyways. Um, ancient cultures have always seen an un, uh, a united universe where everything is connected. Boom. That's why I like reading about ancient cultures so much. <laughs> I learn more about, yeah, I learn a lot more that way. They saw a spirit dwelt within each of us. This was the driving force of our creation. The ancient Chi in ancient China, they saw how the body was comprised of infinite energy fields and called the energy points meridians. The flow of energy around the body was called the microcosmic orbit. I like that term. By applying pressure to the certain areas of the body, this relieved tension and created perfect help, health. Acupuncture, acupuncture helps unlock the energy flow to create harmony in the body. Shoot, I want to get some of those, uh, like those ear beads too, right? Quantum physicists now seeing the spirit as, wait, quantum physicists now seeing the spirit as an intelligent energy field. I think it's supposed to say R. Quantum physicists are now seeing spirit as an intelligent ener energy field. <laughs> it's funny. I mean, it's cool too, right? It's good. I just, yeah. It's like, okay. The second misconception, oh, misperception, is our genes control our biology. Boom! Dude, right? <laughs> Our thoughts do. Don't, I mean, all is mentalism. Biologists have found a new form of genetics called epigenetics. They say instead of our genes being determinist, deterministic, our genes actually have unlimited potential and are, in, and are influenced by our environment. 
Our environment is changing our genes. The genes activate from the outside in. So as I've been reading this book, A-R-E and O-U-R O-U-R have been interchanged, interchangeable. I wonder if you did that on purpose. Our and R. We exist only in relationship to everything around us. The new paradigm embraces our freedom and sees we are not victims of fate, but the power lies inside our hands. The third misperception of science is an extension of Darwinian belief. Charles Darwin, a British scientist, proposed the idea of survival of the fittest in nature, eat or be eaten. The new paradigm is recognizing abundance as our natural state and seeing how evolution is based on cooperation. Competition is an illusion. There is more than enough to go around. Yeah, I saw this uh, meme on Insta the other day and it said, uh, you can't compete with me because I want you to win too. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> the ideas of separation and competition are the foundation for Western thinking. We must come together. Why are we the only species on the planet praying for food and accommodation? Paying. Why are we the only species on planet on the planet paying for food and accommodation? <clears throat> right? What a joke. I think so too. <laughs> the food of the planet should be free and we should use it to heal ourselves. Eating organic foods can raise the vibration and increase a heightened state of wholeness and well-being in the body. Raw foods activate our power and pineal gland. Decalcifying the pineal gland is essential for activating our true power. The ancients have called the pineal gland the seat of intuition, our connection to our primordial life force energy. Allopathic medicine is the medicine paradigm the majority live by. This when doctors only treat the symptoms and not the underlying causes, because that is super logical. <laughs> it just makes so much sense. <laughs> uh. The new way is naturopathic medicine, which treats the root causes of the disease. Prevention is better than cure. Amen. The symptoms of the body are the body's way of healing itself. Mucus helps the body eliminate toxins. By taking a cough suppressant, you work against the body. The body is your greatest servant, working towards harmonious equilibrium forever. It's so smart. It's so cool. And then when we have our thoughts working in conjunction with that, it is even cooler. Opening your heart is essential for self-healing. We must live more in our hearts than our minds. The heart sends out more electromagnetic signals than any other organ in the body. The heart has its own intrinsic nervous system. Therefore, we must take care of our heart, maintaining inner balance. Many of us live in the left brain of linear thinking. The right brain is connected to the heart. The new paradigm is where we fuse the left and right brain, hem brain hemispheres together to become superhuman. Interesting. It's like we're charging the, what is it, the Colossa, Colossus, Colossum, <laughs> something like that. In nature, we see the metamorphosis of the butterfly from the caterpillar. This process mirrors the evolution of human consciousness. That has been a theme of my week, by the way. Imagining all that liquid then turning into those wings and oh, I've, I've been watching... I've been watching a lot of that on YouTube in the last couple of days, watching butterflies change. It just keeps bring coming up wherever I go too. Yeah. The caterpillar's later stages show it eating its heart out and everything in sight. It becomes paralyzed by its own greed. The cells undergo a process called apoptosis. That's how you say it. Yeah. Which means eating itself. Yeah. Coming from the Greek word meaning falling off, the cells commit suicide. I mean, apoptosis is really important, though, just like life and death, like in life, you have to make room for the new cells. 
Lying in the chrysalis, the caterpillar turns into ooze as the cells break down. A mystery occurs when out of the blue, imaginal cells begin appearing and forming small clusters. They are not of the same DNA as the caterpillar. The caterpillar fights off these imaginal cells. However, they join forces with other imaginal cells. These imaginal cells, although the minority, because of their unity, they become the genetic directors of the caterpillar. They form wings, and some of them form legs, until we see the miracle of the butterfly. Also, something super interesting I learned this week while I was learning about butterflies and this whole transformation is that... Um, they had done tests with caterpillars where they like did this this burning sense or something and it like it scared them or they scared them and it was associated with this burning scent and um then when that same caterpillar turned into a butterfly and they did that same scent the the butterfly remembered it so cool right so we do transform but we do you know we still have the memories of the past. So cool. Plus, there's that quote, right, about that guy who had the dream of being a butterfly that was so real that when he woke up, he didn't know if he was a butterfly dreaming he was a man or a man dreaming he was a butterfly. Anyhow, <clears throat> There is a parallel between the metamorphosis of the butterfly and the evolution of human consciousness. In this new paradigm, we have some groups of people encouraging humanity to tap into their true potential. However, they are met with resistance, even sometimes called crazy. Hey, that was my nickname for years. Crazy Alley. <laughs> it hurt my feelings so much. My family called me Crazy Alley, you guys. They don't anymore. And I mean, I am crazy, so it's okay. <laughs> mm, we'll go in for water this time. Whoa! <laughs> Did you see my straw get stuck on my lip? <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Many people are speaking their minds about planet Earth and uniting with kindred spirits. These are the imaginal cells. Only a few people are needed to change the world and ignite Earth's metamorphosis to a higher state. Yeah, yeah. The butterfly shows us becoming lighter is the only way to fly. Music is the universal language. Sound can prevent and heal you from disease. High vibration music is key in these times, right? My heart is pounding so fast. Oh my gosh. Oh, calm down here. What are we doing? Um, we have to not want to be healed from disease. We must see ourselves already healed. <laughs> when you say I want... You are not sending a signal to the universe. You do not have something. Therefore, it will keep you in lack. Right. Once you say, I am healed, I am worthy, the universe grants your wishes. After all, it's the infinite genie. I, reckon, I, I recommend manif like um, daily mantras and manifestations, you guys. They're life-changing. And like um, positive journaling. That's been really helping me too. The body is the physical machine. The mind is the software. And the spirit is the power supply, the reservoir of unlimited energy. An analogy is the body is like a water bottle. The mind is the water and the spirit, the driving force moving the water. We are incredible. <laughs> We are incredible. All right. Chapter 13, page 49. A new paradigm. Time to fly. Are you ready? Are you ready for the new world? Right here in nature. Welcome to the new paradigm. Around the globe, many people feel the energy rising within themselves pouring outward. 
excuse me. There's more. Oh, excuse me. Woo. Okay. There is a great shift happening in so many lives. It's not external date or calendar. It's the metamorphosis happening within ourselves, moving from the caterpillar to the butterfly, seeing we have to reclaim our power as free sovereign spirits of earth, on earth, of earth, right? In earth, maybe. <laughs> um, do -do -do the new paradigm is becoming aware. We do not have to look outside of ourselves. Everything exists within us. The search is over. People are becoming their own guru, looking towards each other for a source of support, inspiration, and strength. Each one of us is a master. We are masters all among us. Whoa, there, whoa, okay, well, all right. Each one of us is a master. There are masters all amongst us. But it starts with knowing thyself. We are the stars. This is a time on the planet where we move from belief into knowing. Ancients have called this the age of the water bearer. We do not have to go on living like this. There is always another way. Breaking the spell of universal mind control, which has left many in a daze, liberates us. The new paradigm is where we take full responsibility for our internal condition. We have to create our own universe. How will you create the new world without money? By doing what you love, you receive currency. Money is energy right? Whatever you give out, you will receive back. The universe always sends back what you give to it. It's a gigantic mirror. Many of us in the new paradigm are now focusing all of our attention on the media and new world order. New world order, it was in quotes. <clears throat> the only thing that matters is what's within yourself. The journey within is the most essential Nobody can do that for you. We must become free once again on the planet. Religion has kept many in bondage, however. It's part of the earth school training. Dude, I, I, I refer to this place as a school a lot. This is how I kind of see it in my head a lot. The true temple is within. Seeing this liberates you. Honoring the animals as sacred is the first step to accessing your higher nature. No life is better than the other. There is no right or wrong way to live. Every action is based on resonance. The new paradigm is one of sharing, where kindred spirits around the whole world will be creating a new infrastructure. The time has come. Life does not have to be suffering. Don't die trying to make it. Abundance is our natural state. Being free is our birthright. The two choices for the two paradigms are love or fear. We can go on like this, or we can make a change. The change has to come from within. Create your own value system. When we no longer need value from jobs, when you create your own job, you create your own economy. There is an information overload on the planet. However, true knowledge comes from within. Reading all the books in the world will not help you. You must read the greatest book of all, yourself. Though I, I do recommend reading lots of books. <laughs> I really recommend it. Get this one. This book is so good, everyone. Seriously. There's a link in the description, by the way. And you can also find it on Amazon. Read your body awareness and emotions and ask yourself, how do I feel? We must sail beyond knowledge because we are infinite. Tapping into your infinite nature shows, shows you there is no one way to develop your inner clarity. Nature is the greatest book. <clears throat> By looking at one flower, you have the equivalent of 50,000 encyclopedias. A picture is worth a thousand words and more. Know thyself and see you are worthy to live in bliss, sublime joy. The true gift lies when you see and open it. Do not take it for granted. Every day I give thanks, reverence, and praise. It never had to happen, but it did. <laughs> The new paradigm is where we have fun and let go. Some people say life should be taken seriously. The more you tap into your inner child and have fun, the more creation takes place. We are co-creators made from the same fabric as the universe. The universe 
is infinite creations, possibilities and expressions. There is no beginning or end. We exist outside of time. We transcend it. The heart space is opening for millions of people in the new paradigm, where we do not live in our minds, instead our hearts. Many of us have become prisoners of our own mind. We've entered a system based on rigid rules and boundaries, seeing we do not have to go along to get along. You can become unique and different. Love yourself 100%. The heart space opens through self-acceptance and appreciation. The heart is key. What the heart already knows, the brain can only dream of. By many shutting down their hearts, they have become desensitized. The new paradigm is where we express ourselves 100%. To express yourself, you must open your heart. See everything you have learned is part of a program. Opening up your heart frees you from all programs. We receive the organic download from the cosmos when the heart expands. Should I say this? Maybe I shouldn't say this. Will they like me? Maybe they will not like me. All of this is the mind. The mind deals in fear analytically. The new paradigm is where we fuse the left and right brain hemispheres together. Creative people live in their right brains, and logical people live in their left. The right brain deals with the left side of the body, focusing on knowing. The left deals with the right side of the body, focusing on logic. When you fuse the two together, you become super powerful. Now the creative side expresses itself, while also you can navigate in the matrix system. Smile. <laughs> it said smile. Smile dot 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 smile um the new paradigm consists of loving yourself embracing embracing you do not have to be perfect ask yourself do you like the reflection you see in the mirror for eternity earth's vibration has been low now we are raising higher we are awake changing thoughts changes your feelings and actions creating a new world starts with you time to fly <laughs> okay bonus chapter one what <laughs> thanks thanks ralph smart <laughs> awesome oh, let me fix my sweater <clears throat> okie dokie How to deal with people that judge you. The universe gives everyone a job. Why do we judge others? Why do they judge us? What's wrong with you? What's wrong with me? Many look at people and do not like their hair, skin color, car, personality, boyfriend, girlfriend. What's happening here? Whenever we judge others, it emanates from our fear and, and separation. When you feel separate from everything around you, then you judge it. When you are connected to something, there is no need to judge. Feeling intimidated by others is another cause for our judgment. To stop worrying, start living, let go, knowing you have no control of what others think or feel. We can only control our response to people's actions. The best way to deal with people who judge or label you is to be silent. <clears throat> Some people want to debate with us. If we are silent, we do not give them food or energy to feed on. The food we feed others people's energies gives them a greater appetite. Silence helps others to look at themselves in the mirror to say, what kind of person am I? <clears throat> Woo! Many people need a reality check. We are living in a multi-dimensional universe of infinite life forms. Therefore, many people are seeing the world in different ways. Everyone is incarnating for different reasons. Everyone is on their own evolutionary journey. Except not everyone will be like you. This is essential. Friction is required for things to move around in the cosmos. Do not pay attention to petty worries. Sometime, or someone can only enter your inner kingdom through an invitation. There are many haters out there, but love your haters as they help reveal your true character. Who are you inviting into your house? When someone is annoying, do not give them the power of a hater. Otherwise, you are placing them as an enemy. They have no power. 
How we define others determines how much power we give away. Many times we are not other people's issues. We think we are, but going back, you find their problems existed before we arrived on the scene. People are dealing with a lot in this 3D reality. A lot of people need someone to take out anger and frustra frustration. Do not let it be you. Staying balanced and neutral is essential for maintaining inner equilibrium. Children live in a state of non-judgment. There is no separation. They are free to fly. As we proceed through life, we become overwhelmed and disconnected from nature. Many sell souls and die in the process. On the road to riches, that's what the Wizard of Oz explored. You never checked behind the curtain. Life is a loop. We go around in a circle and are tested until we surrender. I've been saying that lately. I surrender. This is Earth School. You end up where you first started. It does not matter what direction you take. Once you have lost your soul, you become something else. This is why so many people judge. We are repressed. Dead food from butchered animals fill the plates of many. Ask yourself, the people who judge you, where is their heart space? Do not take it personal. Some people choose to shut down their hearts and become cold and frosty. The people who judge are stiff and cannot move. When you are fluid, you flow like water, letting go of all judgments. Maybe you have family members who do not approve of your lifestyle. Remember, everyone sees, but not everyone sees the world with the same lens. We only see the world according to our own vibration. As you change your vibration, so does your environment. Many people are stuck at a particular vibration, right here in the underworld. Therefore, many reside in their lower nature. These people will always judge because they are separate from their authentic selves, their higher nature. Brush it off and breathe easy when dealing with people who judge you. The more you pay attention to someone, the more it costs. That's why they call it paying attention. <laughs> because you are at an expense liberate yourself from other people's undesirable energies and grudges sometimes people love you then hate you then love you again the problems of others have nothing to do with us we act as mirrors mirroring back to each other someone sees you and you mirror back something they do not want to see within themselves except you cannot please everyone many of us want the world to love us we are gladiators in the arena, screaming, Are you not entertained? <laughs> Did I sound like Russell Crowe? <laughs> um, was he the main gladiator? <laughs> I sure hope so. <laughs> okay. Surrender to yourself by letting go. It's time to be free and happy. Dude. Oh, yeah, we're so close. Good, because my throat's starting to get sore and I have a show tomorrow, so I'm going to be able to sing. Dude, this is so cool. Thanks for hanging out with me, you guys. Hey, Michael, dude, long time no see, man. So cool. Oh, I'm up. I got a cough. One sec. Boom. Okay, here we go. Bonus chapter two. How to stop absorbing other people's energy. Dang. Cool. You turn into what you tuned into. Right. Oh my God. Why That shouldn't blow my mind so much. <laughs> It's like, I don't already know that. <laughs> what the heck? It just blew my mind, though. I, fe I felt it in a different way. <laughs> okay. Every day I wake up, I say, I am not in this world to live up to your expectations. You do your thing. I do mine. And if by chance we meet, that's beautiful. But if not, well, that cannot be helped. Wow. 
That's what Ralph Smart says every day he when he wakes up. <sighs> cool. I say every day when I wake up, I am grateful for the love, joy, and abundance that finds me today. I am open. I am ready. I receive. I am worthy. And I know myself. That's what I've been saying lately. Okay. There are a number of tools I deal with to not absorb other people's energy. See? <laughs> okay. Right, right? There are many people around the globe who are very sensitive. Some people call them psychic. <laughs> you know? Everybody is a psychic. We just have various degrees of sensitivity. Highly sensitive people have the ability to mind read even when they are not speaking. <laughs> Entering the room, they can attract tremendous energy. They feel what everybody is feeling inside the room, right? Feeling can be a great gift, especially in a desensitized world. But how do we protect ourselves from other people's energy? Maybe we could start, I should start saying this every day too, right? I am not in this world to live up to your expectations. You do your thing, I do mine. And if by chance we meet, that's beautiful. But if not, well, that just can't be helped. <laughs> there is a term called the intuitive empath. Empathy is different from sympathy. Empathy is the ability to recognize other people's emotions. Sympathy is feeling compassion for other people. Empathy is feeling into other people. You place your mind inside theirs and you embody what they are going through. There are five ways which have helped me on my journey to stop absorbing other people's energy and toxic junk. Oh my gosh. Oh, snap. I am so pumped about this chapter. <laughs> awesome. <clears throat> Uno. One. Un. <laughs> Just whichever one. Remember, you cannot please everyone. Except not everyone is going to like you. Once you can get past that, you do not absorb other people's energy. Everyone on this planet is here for a different reason, living their own universal life journey. Some people love you, some hate you, but there are no positive or negative people, only resonance. Please love me. Please be my friend. There are many people in the world who are too nice. They always say, why don't I, nice people finish last? There is nothing wrong with being nice. It is more important, however, to be yourself. Once you stay true to yourself, you do not absorb other people's energy because you are loving and accepting yourself 100%. If people do not like you for who you are, too bad. They can hit the road. I'm sorry. <laughs> Two, the invitation. Choose whether or not you would like to be invited to where this person is going to take you. Nobody can enter our dominion, which is our inner kingdom, a universe within itself, without an invitation, right? <laughs> vampires! <laughs> Energy vampires! Son of a gun, I wish this, it's all good. We attract every single person into our lives. We have to see many of us. Wait, uh, what? <laughs> we attract every single person into our lives. We have to see many of us leave food, food as the invitation for people to come inside the house, the temple within you, right? I've talked about that before too. Food, food. When there is no food at someone's house, nobody goes. However, if your neighbor has a scrumptious banquet, everybody flocks there. We have to remember we are consciously or unconsciously inviting people. Not absorbing other people's energy is, re is to remind ourselves the power lies within to choose whether we want to invite this person into our temple, which is within ourselves. Maybe that's why I'm so weird about my space. Like I rarely invite people up it to this to my apartment ever it's like super rare i yeah just saying <laughs> okay all right three do not pay attention a lot of people are called energy vampires woo as an energy vampire is someone who uses your energy to survive 
in essence, a parasite. A parasite can only live on the host body. They call it paying attention for a reason, because everything in the, in the universe is a process of exchange. The universe is a great businessman slash woman. Are you? Yeah, I'm super. I've always been really weird about my space. Even when I lived with my folks, you better not step foot in my room. <laughs> I would get really weird about it. <laughs> but yeah, I still think that there's room. Uh, I mean, like there's more to that, right? There's more to that. And I'm, I am open to like the fluidity of sharing my space in a much different way these days, you know, but I'm still precautious, you know? So yeah, one day at a time. It's pretty cool having more people up more recently. So yeah, energy vampires. I just read that. I know I did. Okay. The law of exchange is the law of nature. When you pay someone attention, you are giving them energy. We have to change our focus to stop absorbing other people's energy. Whoa, that fly is digging on my hair here. Whatever you focus on grows. Energy vampires work by making you think of them. Thoughts are energy. Therefore, they steal your thoughts. Energy is currency. Currency is money. Feelings of exhaustion follow after encountering energy vampires. We have to remember where we pay attention. We are focusing on what we want. So are we focusing on what we want or are we focusing on what we fear? Let go. Know your worth. Do not allow anybody else to give you value. That's how you stop absorbing other people's energy. We must let, let go off society's expectations. Excuse me. Four, breathe. <sighs> oh, right? <clears throat> Going into nature can purify your senses. The fresh chi circulating allows a greater freedom within the body. You feel light, fun, and free. Meditating helps to not absorb other people's energy. Meditation is not only sitting in a lotus pose. It may be dancing, singing, your unique expression of inner freedom. Right? It can be coloring and singing. And Oh, he said singing. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> Purify the water within yourself. Change the water. Become fluid like the water. Become like the butterfly. Have you ever noticed why you cannot catch a butterfly? A butterfly is sensitive, but does not absorb your energy. It is wise. The butterfly moves in a light manner, moving at fast, high speeds. Therefore, the trick of the secret, while you are breathing, you are increasing your vibration. The more you slow down, the more you absorb other people's energy. Breathing increases the blood flow circulation around your body, around the body. You feel calmer. Thus, you do not absorb other people's energy. Keep your head up. The secret of body language. Oh, keep your head up. The secrets of body language. How we carry ourselves in the world says so much about how we see ourselves. Remember, once you look down, you are inviting people to steal your energy. Walk with confidence, with self-esteem. Know that you are worthy, you are deserving. Do not let anybody make you feel inferior because in essence, there is nobody greater than yourself. When the caterpillar is there, consuming all of the food, becoming greedy, it is absorbing energy, therefore it cannot move. Becoming lighter is the only way to fly and stop absorbing other people's energy. Keep it moving just like a butterfly because an alchemist become a transformer. Hmm. We have to change our internal condition before we can change our external condition. That's the secret. <clears throat> Take responsibility for your internal condition. Five. How you feel inside is how you project yourself externally. The body is the unconscious mind. Become aware of your body. Ask yourself, how do I feel? By taking 100% responsibility of feelings, you see the other people's problems are not yours. This frees you from absorbing other people's energy. We live in a world of infinite possibilities, infinite creations, infinite expressions. Therefore, the universe gives everybody a job. 
Nature has a sense of humor. Nature is sending people into our lives to test us. Your greatest adversary is your greatest friend. The people who are draining our energy do not give them power. What you fight to give energy to. The people who are draining our energy do not give them power. What you fight, you give energy to. Tap into your authenticity 100%. Take responsibility. You are a co-creator. We are creating our own reality based on thoughts and feelings. Everything is based around perception. The perception we have of ourselves is greater than the perception others have of, have of, have of us. <laughs> That's the secret. Become aware. Once you change your perception, you change your reality. That's how you stop absorbing other people's energy. Perception coming from the Latin percipio, per, percipio, percipio, meaning the apprehension with senses. Ooh, the apprehension with senses. Hmm. Everything is based on how we see ourselves. This is the secret of perception. It all lies within us, the image we have of ourselves. How do you see yourself? Am I a victim? Once, you're, once you see yourself as a victim, you give, a, you give other people power over you before you start absorbing their energy. Nobody has power unless you give them power. Changing what others think of you is an illusion. Fly, let go of fear today. Fear is false evidence appearing real. Many, as, many of us are stuck in fear. <clears throat> to move past fear, we have to embrace ourselves for who we are. It's not about fitting in on the planet. Please like me. Please be my friend. Through indoctrination, subliminal programming, mind control, many from childhood are told they have to fit in. We have to be the same, dress the same, act the same, laugh at the same things. We all have to... All we have to do is be ourselves 100%. Love yourself. I wonder if I should tuck this behind my ear. It won't do what I want. That's better. Okay. Love yourself. Isn't that the last thing I said? Yeah. The more you connect with yourself, the more empathy you can show to others. Embracing nature activities... Uh, sorry, uh, that fly got me. <laughs> Embracing nature activates your pineal gland, which is the seat of your intuition. So now you pick up everyone's feelings and emotions. You project yourself into other people's personalities. Hmm. This may be liberating, but if you do not know how to stop absorbing other people's energies, it will become a problem. <laughs> Right? Many people in society are cognitive misers. This is where people choose not to worry about anyone else. <clears throat> Dang it, dude. I got the tickle. Through the fluoride in water, bad food diets, and attitudes, many people's pineal glands have become calcified. By choosing not to become aware, we are living in a world of infinite possibilities. It calcifies the pineal gland. Psychopaths do not show empathy because they are desensitized. To stop absorbing other people's energy, we must remember. We must attract what we are. We have to place ourselves in environments which boost our spirits, thus raising our vibration and frequency. Like attracts like. Yes, it do. Absorbing someone's energy is not positive or negative. We give people permission. Everything in nature is based on symbiotic relationship. This is a relationship between the sun and the ocean, between the moon and the plants. Everything is based on sharing in nature. To stop absorbing other people's energy, ask yourself, does this person make me feel good? Am I making them feel good? Is there an equal exchange of energy here? Or is it lopsided on the scales? One person is taking all my energy. We have a choice of where we want to be, of where we place ourselves in the universe. The power lies within you. Remembering you are worthy and have... Uh, remembering you are worthy to have to most limitless, expansive, marvelous existence, 
frees you? Why do we spend our whole day ruminating on someone who is insignificant? Brushing it off, letting it go, and moving past petty thoughts helps us not to absorb other people's energy. The secret to stop absorbing other people's energy is to change what you tune into. Many of us watch hours of television, which tells lies to our vision. We have to tell our own vision. Tell our vision. We have to tell our vision. Yeah, what do we see? Programs such as talk shows may be beneficial beneficial to grasp human nature, but many of us absorb harmful energy. Thus, we are drained after watching. The programs serve as distractions to keep us like programmed robots, zombies, drones. Wake up. The human brain is a giant antenna, the transmitter and receiver of information. Therefore, we have to become conscious of what channel we are tuning into. By changing your channel, you change your focus and do not absorb other people's energy. Like the television, if you do not want to watch a program, you change the channel so you do not have to absorb that energy. The secrets of nature reveal themselves in all aspects of our lives, if only we would open our eyes to see. Women connect to this universe through their womb, which is the stargate. Oh, that's, that's just one word, stargate, which is the stargate, the gateway between two worlds, spirit and matter. Many women feel through their wombs. It talks to them. It is their seat of intuition. Women have to protect their wombs to stop absorbing other people's energy and junk. Cultivate the womb. Place it in healing energies. Go to nature. Take a walk. Take a swim. Jump up and down. Feel alive. We have to feel alive to stop absorbing other people's energy. Live, breathe, enjoy life. Many people feel if I am polite, that's all I need to get through life. No! We have to be direct and true to ourselves. Say what you mean and mean what you say. <clears throat> be yourself. The power of no. This will take you far in life. Say it with confidence. Set energetic boundaries. Once you can say no to people with confidence, you stop absorbing everyone's undesirable energy. Many so-called nice people deny themselves the truth because they want to make everyone feel happy. They are afraid of saying no to anyone. They do not want to hurt other people's feelings and upset them. In essence, they upset themselves by refusing to listen to their inner oracle, which is in their heart. Boom! Right? We can still be nice, but we have to be true to ourselves. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sound is an amazing way to stop absorbing other people's energy. Everything is based on vibration in the universe. Music is the universal language. Once you can heal yourself through sound, listening to music, which uplifts your spirit, it helps us to become neutral. Neutral ocean salt water can help us stay neutral by changing the cells, helping our DNA structure to be more in harmony with our body. Intuition comes from the Latin inturi, meaning to look at or to gaze upon. The more we connect with ourselves, the more we notice the intricate design of nature. Such a gift is to have a deep intuition. However, we have to remember how to protect ourselves from harmful energy. Have fun, smile. You cannot catch a butterfly. Although the butterfly is sensitive, it has mastered the secrets of the universe. It is flying so light, so free, so powerful. We have to become the butterfly, sensitive, but at the same time, projecting ourselves. It does say projecting ourselves from harmful energies. The power lies within yourself. Chapter three. Oh, bonus chapter three. <laughs> How to overcome any fear. Fear is the greatest energy vampire. Right? Yeah. Fear is necessary in fight or flight moments, but many of us fear events which have not happened. How do we free ourselves from fear? Fear is a self-created feeling emanating from an Im uh, imagery belief based on the illusion of separation. 
To let go of fear, we have to start loving and accepting ourselves 100%. Embracing nature, breathing in the fresh air, eating foods which increase our vibration, all of this helps alleviate fear. The power lies within. Ultimately, we have to let go of society's expectations. Of is in quotations. We have to let go of society's expectations. Huh. Hmm. Let go of. Of something. Of something. To be of something. Is that that? To be the of? <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> oh, mother of pearls. We got this. Okay. What do you fear? The greatest fear may be death. Some people... Some people's fears include flying, looking people in the eyes, public speaking, commitment in relationships, changing their dates or uh, changing their diets, aliens, the new world order, spiders, body image, failure, rejection, and accepting and loving yourself 100%. How do we become fearless and let go of society's expectations? The fear is never in the moment. It is in the past or future. The power is in the now. To let go of fear, we have to tap into the present moment. There are many things around to make us afraid of this vast world. But fear is the greatest energy vampire. The more we are in fear, the more we lose our energy. Throughout my journey, I have found five great ways to overcome any fear. <clears throat> One, face your fear. Look your fear straight in the eyes, feel the fear, and do it anyway. Embrace the challenge the universe is sending you. Go for it. Fear is always making us rise higher. Fear never takes place. So it, says, it says fear never takes place. Fear is the waiting for something to happen. The anticipation of what never comes. When something happens, we fear. Then what? We look for another fear. Ask yourself, what is the worst thing that could happen? When it does happen, how does it make me feel? Seeing we can overcome one fear enables us the strength to overcome another fear. Two, do not externalize your power. Many of us on the planet are given away our power to someone or something we feel is more superior than ourselves. Maybe through a religion, guru, political party, feeling someone has cursed us. Therefore, we externalize our power. Now we are the victims. Whenever you see yourself as a victim, you will always remain in fear. Looking back, oh, taking back your power is key to overcome fear. When we see <clears throat> we are the architects of our own reality, it lets the fear out. We create our own reality through every single thought we have. Everything we see is based on our perception, how you see the world. You turn into what you, what you are tuned into. By not feeling worthy, we lose power, giving someone else power over our lives, thus making us more fearful. We must never let anyone place value over our lives. We must give ourselves our unique value system. Not externalizing power means taking 100% responsibility for our thoughts and feelings, our entire internal condition. We create our experiences in life. Other people come, but it is us who chooses how we respond to situations and people within our lives. We have to reclaim our power. Start smiling. Yeah. Three, do not justify your fear. In your childhood, your brother slash sister may have put a spider on you while you were sleeping. Now you fear spiders forever. By rationalizing your fear, you, remember, you remain a prisoner of your fear because you are allowing yourself to reason to hold a reason to hold on to the fear. We tell ourselves this fear is coming from the outside rather than the inside. The power lies within us. By, by no longer making an excuse for the fear, 
we can move past the fear. There is no reason for its existence. The fear is not serving a purpose. It is not creating a well. Being within our, uh, oh, okay. <laughs> it is not creating a well-being within our body. Four, change your belief. All is BS, belief system. Changing your mind changes your world. It changes the relationship you have to fear, therefore liberating you of it. Belief is powerful. If you say, I can overcome this fear, you are right. If you say, I cannot overcome this fear, you are right. Many of our fears emanate from not feeling we are good enough or worthy. All of that has to disappear. Five, let go of judgment. The more you judge, the more you separate. Separation is the foundation of fear. Separation is your only disease. It is the cause. Everything else is an effect. Oh, it is the cause. Everything else is the effect. Everything is connected. I am another yourself now. Mm. So long as we have fear in our hearts, we cannot be free. We have to see where we are directing our energy to. Many of us on the planet are addicted to fear. Ask yourself, are you focusing on what you want or what you fear? Fear has become the medicine of the masses. Reading newspapers and watching the television increases our fear, thus widening our appetite for more fear. We become what we tune into. The only thing to fear is fear itself. Ask yourself, this feeling I'm creating, because I am a co-creator, how is it serving me? Is it empowering me or is it taking away my energy? Fear energy is only powerful when it stays inside. When it comes out, it has no power. Let the fear go. Do not give yourself a reason to hold on. Become of the body awareness. The body is the unconscious mind. The body is always communicating to us. The body, mind, spirit are all interconnected. Aligning your body aligns your mind and thus aligns your spirit in perfect harmony. A tense body means you have a tense mind, showing you have a true spirit. The three are interchangeable. There is a pattern throughout everything in existence. Finding time to reconnect back to your body is essential to overcome fear. To overcome fear, we have to release tension within the body. Fear is muscle memory stored within the body. Fear now becomes a pattern within the body. Many people afraid to direct uh, eye contact put their heads down towards the ground. This creates muscular tension within the neck, leaving fear imprints. Now fear becomes a part of the body, a muscle memory. When you change the relationship with your body through healing practices, you heal your mind because you are reprogramming the fear, making it vanish. Energy is stored within our minds. <clears throat> that is the secret. Fear and love are stored within the body. Many people are afraid to smile, to smile, to be free from fear. You are expanding. <laughs> The more you frown, the more your muscles contract, making you more fearful. The body never lies. Now the fear has left an energetic signature on the body. How are we carrying ourselves? How we carry ourselves externally is how we feel internally. The power lies within you in every single action. We are creating our own reality. Some people say we are governed by everything around us. To an extent, it is true. We do not have control of what happens to us, but we do have control over how we respond. In relation to fear, we must change our reaction to a situation. Before, before with change, I think it's before we, before we change our interaction to that situation. Attitude is also a great way to overcome fear. How do you see things? The same event happened to two people, but they never saw it in the same way. Each one is taking a different attitude. Therefore, each one is dealing with fear in a different way. Attitude creates a blood chemistry within the body. Fear is a chemical. Once you take back your power, you see as your attitude changes, so does the types of chemicals being released from the brain. Phenomenal. Many of us, our fears emanate from our lifestyles. 
from the foods we eat. Foods like mangoes, dates, kale, spinach, and oranges have healing vibrations. Every food carries a particular vibration. Oranges are my favorite fruit. <laughs> I love them. <clears throat> food can be used to heal us from fear. Many fearful people tend to have a refined diet of pure junk food. On my journey, I found moving toward a plant's, a, a plant's, I think it's supposed to be a plant-based diet. A planet-based diet is what it actually says. A plant-based diet, eating more sun foods, fear disappeared. You are what you eat, drink, and think. Everything is intertwined. We must look at all areas of life whilst dealing with fear. Does the music I listen to leave me with a sense of calm or minimize my fear? Are we connecting to kindred spirits or focusing on people who steal our energy? All of these questions must be asked to overcome fear. Fear of the unknown is, com is common among many. We fear the uncertainty of life. This is the existential anxiety. Some people are afraid of death upon seeing we are living in a transient universe. There is nothing to worry over. Energy cannot be destroyed, only transferred. Your body may die, but your spirit will live on forever. Tapping into our inner child helps us embrace the unknown. Remember when everything was mysterious. <laughs> Remember when everything was mysterious? Everything is mysterious. <laughs> <clears throat> Children are connected to the source. The more you live out of the present moment, the more you deviate deviant from source deviant it says yeah from source which is a part of yourself we are made from the same fabric as the universe the universe does not want you to be afraid it is why is that why you were created was i put on planet earth to be and live in perpetual fear 24 7 when we turn off the tv we see oh yeah when we when we turn off the tv we see I think maybe it's supposed to say on. When we turn on the TV, we see wars and a scary world. Letting go of fear restores inner balance in your kingdom, within yourself. To overcome fear, we have to tune and keep alive the inner child within us. Balanced body, balanced mind, balanced spirit, the original trinity. Overcoming fear is about looking at the worlds we use. Words, words. Overcome fear is about looking at the words we use. Words are powerful vibrations. The word grammar, coming from the old English word grimoire, meaning book of spells. <laughs> Everything we speak is a spell of some sort. Words were created to hide the truth. By changing the words you use, this helps overcome certain fears. I can't, no, I can. By saying I can, this reprograms your whole body. It remolds every single cell within your body. Once you say I can, your cells are working for you. Once you say I can't, your cells are working against you. Saying I can't closes you off to a world of infinite possibilities. Everything is possible. Nothing is impossible. Right? I got into an argument with my um senior... Uh, he was my senior writing teacher about that. <laughs> I was like, yeah, everything's possible. And then he told me, well, that means then you're willing to go and steal. <laughs> I was like, what? Where's that coming from? Um, <laughs> okay, so impossible. Okay. Words can be used as positive affirmations to heal yourself and overcome fear. Use words to inspire and uplift your spirits. We are talking to ourselves, even when we are not speaking. <laughs> talking to your heart, liver, and pancreas can remove fearful energies from these powerful organs. What a great idea. What energy am I directing to these organs? Is this an energy of fear or is it an energy of love? There are only two energies in the universe. Ask yourself. What are we inviting into the sacred space within ourselves, fear or love? The power with, uh, lies within our hands. We have to be ready to use it when we're ready. Having a light heart is the best way to overcome fear. Have fun. Many of us hold on to fearful baggage by justifying it. 
we say, I need to hold on to this fear because the moment we let go, then we let go of the experiences of what's happened to us. No, we can forgive. We do, uh, we do not have to forget. We can let go of the fearful energies, which are only harming ourselves to a greater degree. So many people on the planet live in fear. Fear breeds a whole host of other negative emotions, such as guilt, hate, anxiety, stress, panic, and anger. All of this builds to a crescendo until we become stuck. We turn into the very things we are afraid of. In my early journey, I was afraid of the powers that be. Then I realized we are the powers that be because we are creating our own reality. We are the power plant creating every single experience in our reality. It's all coming from our perception. You are powering your reality. You are the glue holding everything in place. We are a phenomenal power. Once we connect together with like minds supporting each other, together we can help each other overcome fear. United, we thrive. We need to know what is happening around the globe, yes, but ask yourself, is it liberating you or is it making you a prisoner of your own mind? To do or to be? That is the question. Many people on the planet are caught in doing. We always have to be somewhere. This takes ourselves away from the present moment, therefore making us more prone to fear. By letting go, moving from doing into being, you overcome fear. You allow yourself to, sur to surrender to the present moment. All we have to do is become ourselves authentically and love it. The more people think for themselves, the more they let go of fear because their fears are not theirs. It is the media's and their society. It has been implanted in your mind from childhood. This is what is keeping you in bondage and in slavery. It, fees it frees you to see this. The fears we have are not our own. Many people fight in wars on behalf of their country. Some people do not like certain people because they are raised in cultures and traditions which tell them not to. We have to be free from all man-made dogma and law. There is only one universal law. Oh wait, there is only universal law. We have to align ourselves to that. The only authority is nature. Boom. We have to let go of any kind of separation. All of this is the root of our fears and our concerns. To overcome fear, we have to know thyself. So many of us spread or spend our entire life going out of ourselves. We have to travel the journey within ourselves to discover who we are. I am not a Democrat, Republican, conservative, a lawyer, my job, my skin color, religion, nationality, or race. I am none of these things. When I saw this on my journey, it freed me from fear. To overcome fear, we must let go of all labels, let go of society's expectations. Let go of other people's definition, create your own. Dance, be free, at one with nature. Learn from everything around you. Remember, we came here to live free and have fun. The end! That was, that was the book! Oh my gosh, two, three, three, three. Oh my gosh, that's what the time says right now. Okay, just cool. Lots of all the threes that are. All right, feel alive. Um, a note from the author. Ralph Smart is an author, psychologist, alchemist, researcher, radio host, musician, graphic designer, filmmaker, and infinite being. Ralph Smart was born in London. He has traveled to five continents. I bet he's traveled to more now, though since or wait are there more oh no i'm such an idiot sometimes <laughs> i just know that he travels a lot is what i'm saying i and i appreciate that or i've seen it through his channel right um he enjoys nature i mean like we don't talk like i mean he did say my name out loud wow <laughs> all right um where are we at he has traveled to five continents he enjoys nature and meeting people from all spectrums of life. Awarded with a bachelor's combined honors in psychology and criminology, human nature fascinates him. The founder of Infinite Waters, a media channel on YouTube showcasing gripping documentaries and videos regarding unlocking true human potential and being a limit limitless being. 
I recommend you all go and subscribe. Yeah. Um, Ralph has also just published his debut debut novel, Triathlon, The Love of a Galaxy, a novel taking a glimpse into the potential future, the digital age where wars are fought through technology. Above all, Ralph knows all humans were born to be free. Being free is our birthright. You can get that triathlon book, too, at his website, infinitewaters.net slash books. I wonder if that's still... I wonder if that's still a website that's up because I know he has ralphsmart.com too. All right, everyone. We did it. Feel Alive by Ralph Smart. Thank you so much for being here with me. Let's grow our springs and be who we want to be and uh, create some awesome spaces in the world. Ah, thank you all. I love you. I, I believe in us and, um, I'll see you on the next live. Thank you. Thank you. Until then. End.